Wrap sizers allow UI components to flow onto multiple lines depending on the available space, while spacers provide a way to add empty spaces between components or align them to specific positions. In this WXWidgets tutorial, we will learn how to use wrap sizers and spacers to build a simple drawing app that allows users to draw with colored pencils of different sizes. As always, our app will work on Windows, Linux and Mac, with a native feel on each platform. So let's dive in and start learning how to use wrap sizers and spacers to build our cross-platform drawing application. Here's the initial code. Remember that you can download it from GitHub. The link is in the description. We have our application class and the frame class representing our main window. To begin building our drawing application, we will create the color panes. Both the color panes and the pen panes will inherit from an abstract selectable pane class which will handle common elements such as default size and paint events. The selectable paint class will also draw the outline if the paint is selected while delegating the drawing of the content to the subclasses through the pure virtual draw content method. Here's a basic constructor where we set the background style and bind the paint event. If that's something new to you, I recommend my custom controls tutorial where I explain creating custom UI components in detail. In the paint event, we create the graphics context and then set up the parameters for the rounded rectangles we are going to draw. The selection rect is used to draw the selection outline, while the content rect contains the actual component such as a colored square or a black circle representing the pen width. To draw the inner rectangle, we use the draw content method, which delegates the rendering of the rectangle to the correct subclass. If the selected flag is set to true, we draw an outline to highlight the user's current selection. In the dark theme, we use a white outline, while in the light system theme, we use a black outline. This visual cue helps users to identify their selection and adds to the overall usability and appeal of the user interface. Now the actual color pane. This class, of course, derives from the selectable pane class and adds its own functionalities, allowing the user to set the color and overriding the draw content method where we render a simple colored rounded rectangle. To add this component to the main window, we head to the main CPP file and include the correct header. Next, we add a method to build the panel for our controls. In the final application, this panel will sit on the left side of our window and contain colors, pen sizes and the save button. We start building this panel by setting the background color depending on the current system theme. Then we add text and our color pane, arranging both controls in a vertical sizer. Finally, we call this method in the Windows constructor and run the app. And here's our colored square with a wide selection outline. Let's add some more and see how wrap sizers can help us with arranging them in our window. Since we will have more colors now, we put the code for creating the panes in a separate method. We also add some nice colors using the standard web notation. We iterate over the colors, create a color pane for each one and add them to the sizer and our color panes vector. This vector will be useful later when we handle selection and passing the colors and pen sizes to our canvas. In the build controls panel method, we create a simple horizontal sizer and add our colored squares there. Let's see what that looks like. The colors are arranged in a line, but that line is limited by the window width. To get to the colors on the right, the user needs to resize the window. This behavior can certainly be improved. The change is really simple. Just replace the box sizer with a wrap sizer, remembering to include the correct header. 
Now the user experience is much better. The squares wrap to new lines, making it easy to select the desired color. Let's now see how spacers might be useful. By the way, if you are finding this tutorial helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could show your support by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And to all of my current subscribers, thank you so much for all your support. If you know anyone who might benefit from this content, please consider sharing this video with them. Your help in spreading the word is truly appreciated. Here's our save button. If we simply add it to the sizer, it sits just below the color panes. What we want to do is to make it stick to the bottom of the window. To achieve this, we add a stretch spacer to our vertical sizer before adding the button. We can also add a fixed size spacer to create the bottom margin. This is great, but notice how the button disappears when the width of the window is too small. There is simply not enough space to fit all the colors and the button. If you watched my tutorial about scrolling in WS widgets, you know that this is very easy to fix. We wrap our controls panel in the WX scrolled template and set the vertical scroll rate to a non-zero value. Now when the window is very narrow, the scroll bar appears and the user can easily scroll through the whole content. Let's continue the development of our paint app. Here's the class for the pen size panes. Again, we derive from the selectable pane, customize the constructor to accept the pen width this time, and add the drawing code. First, we draw the white background rectangle, and then the black circle representing the pen size, making sure it's centered inside the white square. The draw ellipse method will draw circles if we provide the same width and height in the arguments. Just like with the color panes, we create a setup method in the frame class, where we create the panes and add them to the sizer. We use a simple formula to create pens of increasing sizes. Here's our pens section with a title and pen panes arranged in a wrap sizer. And that's what this looks like. We have built a functional controls panel for our drawing app that correctly responds to window size changes. Now let's put that panel in a splitter window and add the drawing canvas. The concept of splitters is very popular in modern UI design. If you want to know more, I recommend my sizers and splitters tutorial, but the concept is quite simple. We create a splitter containing our controls panel on the left and some kind of panel on the right. The user will be able to grab the separator in the middle and dynamically change the proportion between the left and the right side. For now, our canvas will be a simple white panel with no functionality just to demonstrate the concept. We will change that to a proper drawing canvas in a moment. After setting size constraints on the window, we run the app and see that it starts to resemble a proper drawing application with a resizable control panel. Here's a very simple drawing canvas we built in the menus tutorial. We have our vector of squiggles, each one being just an array of points. In the onPaint handler, we iterate over these objects and connect the points of each one with lines. The points are added when the mouse moves while the user holds the left button. Because the mouse move updates are quite frequent, our points will be close enough that the lines we draw will look like a smooth path. When the mouse leaves the canvas or the button is lifted, we set the drawing state to false. On the left button event, we set it again to true and add a new squiggle to our array so that the points will be added to this newly created object. To use this, we need to add the CPP file to the sources in our CMake list file and add the canvas object to the main frame. Before we run the app, 
let's change the background color and the pen color of the canvas so that we have a white canvas by default. This is great, but the canvas is not connected to our controls panel and does not react to the color or size changes. Let's fix this. We need an object representing a single squiggle. The simple vector of points is not enough because every path may have different color and thickness. All this information will be stored in our path objects. We update the squiggles array in the canvas to reflect that, add the variables for the current color and pen size, and head to the CPP file to use these concepts in the implementation. When drawing, we iterate over the path object collection and extract the points vector from each of these. Then, when setting the pen, we use the color and width stored in the path object. The creation of the new squiggle on the left button keypress event also needs to be altered. We create an empty path object, remembering to use the current color and width. And in the mouse move event, we ensure the point is added to the path's points array. We're almost there. What we need to do now is to handle the click events on our panes to correctly set the current color and current width in our canvas object. The select color pane and select pen pane methods will mark the correct pane as selected so that the outline is rendered around it and update the current width and color in the canvas. To perform this update on click events, we need to bind to the left down event, which we do when setting up the panes. Also, at the end of the constructor, we select the first color and width so the user can start drawing immediately. Finally, we implement the selection method. The idea is simple. Iterate over all of our panes, selecting only the one provided in the function's argument. Then refresh each one to trigger the redraw and set the canvas properties using the selected pane. And now we have a functional drawing app. We can choose colors and pen sizes for each squiggle we draw. We can also clear the canvas and start again. What we are missing is the image export feature. So let's see how to implement it. We will need two methods in our canvas class. The show save dialog will show the file browse dialog and render the drawing to the selected image file. To render the image, we will use the same code as in the onPaint method. We are going to move this code to the draw on context function so that it can be used in both places. Let's start with the second one. It's just the drawing code performed on the WX graphic context object, essentially copied from onPaint. Using file dialogs in WX widgets is super easy. If you want a deep dive into this topic, check out my dialogs tutorial, but for now, we simply create a dialog object, specify the PNG extension, and show it using show model. If the user selected the file name, we proceed with creating a bitmap to draw our canvas on. Note that the size is multiplied by the content scale factor. Similarly, we use this method to set the scale. This is important on modern high DPI displays. The following code is similar to the onPaint method. We set the background, create a context, and draw our squiggles. Finally, we save our bitmap to the file specified by the user in the save dialog. We use this method in two places, in the context menu for the canvas and in the save button click handler on the controls panel. And that's it for this tutorial. We created a functional paint app that allows drawing with different colors and widths, letting the user export the image to a PNG file. Remember to check out these videos too, and I will see you in the next one.